Hi, I'm Brian Lane, Certified Pedorthist with Dr. Comfort. In this video, we will be discussing and demonstrating how to properly heat mold A5512 heat moldable inserts. Now, these inserts have several different names, including A5512, the code necessary for billing these to Medicare, as well as other insurance carriers, as well as non-custom accommodative orthotics, heat moldables, off-the-shelf or over-the-counter inserts. Now these inserts are uh, made up of two types of materials, a base layer of a blue and yellow EVA and a top layer of a, a soft accommodative material known as P-cell. These inserts have been approved by Medicare to be billed as, out as A5512. Now during this video I will show you how to properly heat mold these inserts with either a convection oven or a heat gun, both reaching a minimum temperature of Medicare's requirement of 230 degrees Fahrenheit. With that being said, it's also important to note that you should not use a microwave oven in order to heat these inserts. Additionally, we will talk about the pedorthic modification pads that we also offer, which include arch pads, scaphoid pads, uh, as well as heel posting and other materials that we have, other pads that we have, to modify these specific inserts. Now I'd like to demonstrate on uh, two patients the proper heat molding techniques for Medicare. For our first demonstration, we will be using Mallory from Customer Service to heat mold non-custom inserts using a heat gun. Now the very first thing you want to do with your patient is to first verify the style, including the size and fit of the shoes. That way you ensure that the shoes and inserts are going home with that patient that day. The next thing you want to do is properly position the patient in order to heat mold these inserts. So I'll have Mallory sit forward in the chair so she's at more of a neutral position and be able to put a little bit more weight on the insert as it's heat molded. So once we've done that, I usually demonstrate to the patient exactly what will occur. We will heat mold this insert and I'll have you put your foot right on that insert as it's warm. That will ensure that we're going to get achieve total arch contact, which is the main purpose of heat molding these inserts. So, once we've instructed the patient what we, we will do, then we could start heat molding. Now, two techniques can be used with this heat molding gun. First, you could use it standing up and just move the heat, uh, the insert over the heat. Or you could actually use a, a surface such as a box top that will not conduct any heat and you don't burn any surfaces there. I'm going to use this technique and the way you want to heat mold these inserts is start with the bottom. You want to heat mold the bottom of the insert first, uh, mainly focusing on the forefoot and also the arch. Then we'll heat mold the top side. So starting with molding on the bottom of the insert, again focusing on the forefoot and also the arch is our, our main purpose there because we want to make sure that we're going to achieve that total arch contact. The heat mold constantly moving, keeping a safe distance away because again we don't want to uh, focus too much heat on one particular area. This heat gun also states on the box that it goes above 230 degrees Fahrenheit, so it really just depends on the heat gun how often or how long you'll have to heat mold the insert. Once you've heat molded the bottom, then focus on the top, again focusing on the forefoot and also the arch. As you see, I'm constantly moving, keeping a safe distance away. There are two ways to know when this insert has been heat molded enough. One is you could actually leave a thumbprint on the insert itself, or you'll start to see the insert curl just a little bit and you'll know that that's molded enough. One key thing here is if you notice that it's getting a golden brown that's actually a bad thing. You burn the insert and just contact our customer service. We'll be happy to uh, get you a new one. So after we've heat molded that insert sufficiently, we can turn that insert, the heat gun off, and then we're going to properly position that on the patient's uh, arch and foot and this molding block, which is available with Dr. Comfort, to make sure that that molding block is pushing up on the insert to push up to meet uh, total con arch contact with the patient's foot. You also ask the patient to lean forward to put a little bit more weight and pressure on the insert to again help achieve that arch contact and leave a good impression for her uh, for the foot. Okay. Additionally, because you're dispensing three pairs and you're billing Medicare for three pairs, you would want to heat mold all three pairs of inserts at the same time. So as that insert is being heat molded, you can remove the next pair and start to heat mold that next pair, starting again with the bottom and doing the top. Usually I found that however long you heat mold it is how long the patient should be putting pressure on the insert itself. Now one key thing here is if the insert does not achieve total arch contact, you want to add a scaphoid pad, also called an arch pad on the insert, which I will demonstrate here shortly to make sure you're achieving the total arch contact. For this next demonstration, we will use the convection oven to heat mold the inserts. 
As you can see with Mallory, she is wearing socks, which is uh, advised for your diabetic patients to make sure that when heat molding these inserts, uh, they're wearing socks, not barefoot or nylons, because that potentially could burn the patient. This goes for the convection oven and the heat gun. So, in order to begin this process, we've already verified the fit for the patient. Now we'll set our uh, convection oven to above 230 degrees Fahrenheit. And you'll also want to set a timer. And to set that timer, you want to ensure the appropriate amount of time so you're not burning the inserts. Uh, and you may want to practice that ahead of time. So once we've set the timer, it's achieved its uh, appropriate temperature. You may want to put on some protective gloves to, uh, as you're placing the inserts in so you, as not to burn yourself. So as I put on that protective glove, I'll open up that convection oven and I could place both inserts in at one time. I do like this approach because you could heat mold two at the same time for the patient. As they continue to heat up, again, you want to set that timer to make sure you have the appropriate amount of time. When the timer goes off, now it's time to remove those inserts and have the patient stand on those to start to heat the heat molding process. So the timer went off and then we'll want to remove those and have the patient stand up. We're going to do this uh, weight bearing. So have the patient stand up and put both of their feet on the insert itself. The idea here is trying to ensure that the arch is achieving total arch contact. And again, if it does not, you want to add that scaphoid or arch pad, which will be the next demonstration. Additionally, what you can do is, while those are heat molding, take out the next pair and place those inside the oven to make sure you're heat molding those as those are heat molding on the patient's foot. This is how to heat mold an insert using the convection oven. Now I'd like to show you how to add scaphoid or arch pads to achieve that total arch contact. Because achieving total arch contact is a Medicare requirement, we at Dr. Comfort have come out with a family of pads, these pedorthic modification pads to assist you in aiding these patients to not only offload uh, specific sites on the bottom of the patient's foot, but also achieve total arch contact. Specifically talking about the arch contact, we have scaphoid or arch pads, uh, which could be found either in a soft sponge arch pad or even a harder, more rigid uh, rubber pad. Now, these can be ordered through Dr. Comfort, and as the, the orders are placed, we send the, those to you in a pair. Once you've received those, you want to uh, add those onto the insert to help achieve that total arch contact in the patient's foot. To put these on, I will demonstrate by using some super glue, which is also available at Dr. Comfort. You may also use rubber cement. But to do that, you want to add the, the rubber cement or the super glue on the bottom of the insert itself. Now, this is a quick curing uh, super glue, so you want to be careful uh, where you're actually touching that. So once you've uh, gotten the arch pad, you'll place that on the insert itself, and you want to hold that on there only for about 10 to 15 seconds for that uh, uh, super glue to cure. So after you've placed it on there, it's going to stick on there pretty, pretty good per permanently for that patient. Once you've done that, you could turn that over and, and again, make sure that once the, uh, the patient's foot is placed on there, that you're now achieving total arch contact. Some additional pedorthic modification pads include the adjustable heel lift, which could actually be remove different layers if you need a different height. We also have a sponge a heel pad, which is also nice cushioning support, and also some heel posting. We have a, a PVC heel post as well as more of a rubber heel post. Additionally, we have metatarsal pads, uh, again coming in small, medium, and large, just like all of our products here, to offload forefoot deformities. Additionally, we have uh, both uh, metatarsal pads, I'm sorry, metatarsal bars, dancer pads, and IPK pads, all to assist with offloading uh, different areas of the foot. If you have any questions regarding any of these tools or would like to order them, please don't hesitate to call our customer service or any one of our number of certified pedorthists on staff at Dr. Comfort. Thank you.